Hello everybody, my name is Kim and I'm an illustrator slash animator from South Africa. And in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add an animated mat to generators who you're seeing in Toon Beam Harmony. So here you can see we've got a little scene set up. If you look at the render view you'll notice that we already have some lighting on the bottom of our chest. This lighting has been added with an animated mat generator already. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one to the lid of the chest that's going to match the lighting that's happening on the lower chest. Another thing to look at is the fact that the top of this chest is animated. You can see it opens up. And we've got another animated mat generator on the inside that is creating a glow inside the chest. We're not going to worry about the animation in this video. We're just going to look at placing our animated mat generator on the lid. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how to animate that mat generator. Okay, so here in my node view, you can see I have a clean top layer, which is the entire top of my chest. In our drawing view, you can see that we have line art and we have color art, and those two are separated. And there is a reason for this. It's because we don't want the animated mat generator to affect our line art as well. So I've separated the line art so that I can bring it above the animated mat generator. It's up to you if that's something you want to do. You might decide you want the animated mat to affect the line art. But as you can see, the lower chest, the line art is not affected by the lighting. So that's why I've separated the line art from the color art. So the first thing you want to do to create an animated mat generator is to open the animated mat generator window from your Windows drop down. At the bottom here, you'll find the animated mat generator, and then you can slot it into your interface wherever you want it. So I've put mine here by my color. Now I'm going to add an animated mat generator to my node view. There's two ways you can do this. You can either add it straight from your library and just drag it in and attach it where you need it. But there's a much easier way of doing it, and that's to select the composite in your node view and then to add it through the animated mat generator window. So here you'll see there's a button and that button says add mat to composite. So I'm going to press that button and it's automatically going to connect my animated mat generator to my composite, which is already handy. But on top of that, it's going to add the mat input drawing layer for me as well, which is something that won't happen if you drag your animated mat generator in from the library. So this way is a lot more convenient. But one thing you should take note of is that it automatically is going to connect to your multiport in if you're inside a group. So I'm just going to disconnect this. You are able to put a peg on your mat input drawing if you feel that you want to move that drawing around. I'm not going to do it right now. Okay, so what is the mat input? Well, the mat input is basically going to be the drawing that shapes your animated mat generator. So as you can see on the bottom of the chest, these orange areas here are the mat inputs for these animated mat generators. So we're going to do something similar on the top of the chest here. But before I do that, I'm just going to rename this mat input so that I know what it belongs to. So we're just going to call this chest wood so that we know that this is the animated mat generator that is going to be applied to the wood of the lid of the chest. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to select the mat input layer, which is now called chest wood, and I'm going to draw a shape. Now, it doesn't matter what color the shape is because it's going to be changed by the animated mat generator settings anyway. So you don't have to worry about the color that you draw this mat input in. I'm going to draw a very simple shape. I'm going to try and match it up to the bottom of the chest. I'm going to snap these corners on my shape to make sure that there's only four points on the entire shape. So I'm going to snap my points together to make sure that this stays as simple as possible. Now obviously if you have a more complicated object that you have to add an animated map generator to, you can make a slightly more complex shape. But in this case, we don't need a complex shape. We can work with just the four points. I'm going to fill that shape, and this now becomes the shape that creates our animated mat generator. Now, if you render this, 
you'll notice you have a solid white block. So right now the animated map generator is set to solid white. We're going to change that a bit later, but first we're going to actually manipulate this shape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually select my animated map generator and I'm going to turn on my show control, which is this little orange railroad you see up here. You'll immediately see something popping up on your animated map generator and it's a red outline. So at this point I'm going to select my transform tool over here, my animation transform tool, and you'll see that all of these buttons become available to you once you select that tool. So we have this red outline here and that actually represents an outer contour of your animated map generator mat input. If we take that away, you'll see a green contour and that represents the inner contour of your animated map generator mat input. It basically means that this green contour is going to be the inside of our gradient, whereas the red contour is going to be the outer gradient. And as you can see, you can also go between your contours by pressing these contour buttons under the mat visibility settings. Before we start to edit this, there's one more thing that I'd like to show you. We don't particularly need it for this exercise, but it might come in handy if you use it with another character or object that you want to apply an animated mat generator to. So as you can see, there's two inputs here on our animated mat generator. There's the mat input, which creates the actual effect. And then there's another little point over here that is called the snapping source. So what this means is that you can snap these contours to an actual object or shape. But we have to plug something in there first so that it knows what to snap to. So we're going to plug the color art of our chest into that snapping source. I'm going to snap this to my color art of the lid. Uh, again, it's not something we necessarily need for this exercise, but I'm going to do it for the sake of example. So I'm clicking on my animated map generator again. I have my transform tool selected. So now I get the option of all of these buttons over here. I'm going to make sure both my outer and inner contour is selected. And then I'm going to click on this magnet. When you have your magnet selected, you'll see that these points come up on your shape. Now there's two things here that you can click on. There's the actual points themselves. This will activate the point for snapping when you manipulate your mat input shape. And then there's these points over here. Now, if you click this, it will allow the contour or the line of the shape to snap. And it'll also activate the point on either side. I'm not going to activate that for this exercise because I don't want it to snap to the edge of this. I want it to actually go halfway. So I'm just going to snap the points. So I'm going to just click and activate each of these points. You'll see the shape moves a little bit. That's normal. And that should activate both the shapes, both the inner and outer contour. After I've done that, I'm going to go back to my editing mode and to my define map point. And this is going to allow me to actually edit these shapes separately. With both my contours activated, I'm going to grab the edges of my shape and you'll see that they automatically snap to the artwork that I have on top of the chest. Then I'm just going to manipulate the shape of this so that it follows the shape of my chest. And I want it to meet up basically with this shape that's happening on the bottom of my chest here. So if we now look at our render, you'll see this entire thing is again solid white. We actually have to edit the contours separately. So right now our red contour, the outer contour, is perfectly fine. It's fitting exactly where I want it to fit, but we need to change the inner contour so that we get a kind of gradient effect happening. So I'm going to turn off my outer contour so that I just see the green of my inner contour. And this one I'm going to pull right back. Again, I'm using my define map point to do this. And now if we look at our render view, you should see a kind of gradient happening where the green contour is the most intense part of the gradient. Okay, now we want to make this look a lot better in terms of what colors we're using and the kind of gradient that's happening. So we're going to go back to our animated mat generator in our node view, and we're going to open the properties of that animated mat generator. Here you'll get two tabs, the mat and the advanced. Now this is where you change your colors and the type of gradient that's happening in your scene. 
So here we've got an interpolation mode. I'm going to change that from distance to parametric. This gives us a much more even gradient, but you can experiment with the different types that are here. Now we have a color interpolation. I'm going to leave mine a constant, but you can change it to two colors and actually create quite an interesting effect with the colors of your gradient. However, I'm only using one color, so there's no point in me using the two color one. So I'm going to go back to constant and I'm going to change that inner color to the orange that you see here on the bottom chest. Now it's looking much closer to the effect that we have down here. If you find that that color is too intense, you can also change the alpha to get a more transparent version of that color. And you can do that with the outer color as well if you decide to go with linear two colors. So I'm going to close this now that I'm happy with the colors that I have going on here. But I do have a bit of a problem because our color is covering parts of the chest that I don't want it to cover. So I'm going to do one more thing that is going to isolate this animated matte generator to the wood of my lid rather than the entire lid itself. We'll need two things to do this. In your node library, find a color selector. The color selector works quite similarly to a color override, but it's just a much simpler version. Then we're going to get a cutter. So I'm going to attach my cutter into the animated matte generator, making sure that it passes through the image port of my cutter and not the matte port. And then I'm going to take an extra connection from my color art, place it into the color selector, and then connect the color selector to the mat of my cutter. So I'm going to open my color selector and I'm going to click on this little plus button over here and it's going to give me some palettes to look at. Now I want to go into chest one and I'm going to choose wood main, which is the color of our wood on our lid. Now all of a sudden you see something happening in your camera. Unfortunately, the effect that we have is backwards, so we need to invert the cutter. You can do this by double clicking the little mask icon on your cutter. Now the cutter is inverted and our animated matte generator is affecting just the wood color on our chest. However, there's one more thing we need to look at and that's the line art. The line art is still being somewhat obscured. So we're going to fix that by just making sure that the line art of the lid of our chest is above the animated matte generator on the composite. And there we go. Everything is sorted and everything is fixed. So now we have the same sort of lighting happening on our lid that is happening on the bottom of our chest. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and apply animated mats to each of these pieces on the lid of my chest. I will have to do one animated mat for each slat that you see on the top of the chest here, including this piece over here. So that's four more generated mats. And I'm going to isolate these mats to the stone color that I have on these pieces as well to make sure that they don't affect the color of the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and add that now and I'll see you back here soon. And I'm back. And as you can see, our chest now has effects on all parts of the lid. I originally said I was going to add four matte generators, but I actually decided to add five. And the reason why is because not only did I want an animated matte generator for each of these slats, but I wanted one overall as well, just to add an overall gradient. So they each have their own little animated matte generators. And then they have one overall that's just giving a large gradient over the entire stone area of this lid. And as you can see, I put backdrops in just to organize each of these areas. For each animated matte generator, I have the inputs, which I have named. And then I have a cutter and a color selector for each one. And this color selector is the stone color of the chest so that these are only affected by the stone parts of the top of my chest. So that's how you apply an animated matte generator to an object in Toon Boom Harmony. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to apply this animated matte generator to more than one drawing so that it can actually be animated with your object or character. 
So I'll see you there.